Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. This is going to be episode 2 of my Crucible Tips and Tricks series and we're still going to be going over some stuff that you need to be doing before you actually try to go into a Crucible match and get sweaty. This is still all the pre-game stuff. Episode 3, which I will try to have up next week, will go over more of the in-game stuff that you're going to be doing. But in this one, we're still doing our pre-game and we're going to start by talking about how you need to learn the maps in Crucible. Now, I'm not going to show you every single map that is available in Crucible and show you where the special spawns and the heavy spawns and where the flag spawn and the rift spawn. I'm not going to do all that because that is a very, very long video that I do not feel like making. But what I will show you is just an idea of what you need to know. So I'm in a private match right now. You can see the game mode is rift. There is the spark right down there. And right over here, we have heavy. So, like, little things like this. Like, uh, on this particular map, uh, we are on Pantheon. Uh, the spark spawns right where uh, B-Flag is. And the rift over here, where you actually deposit it on this side, is where C-Flag is. And the rift on this side is where A-Flag is. You have bottom heavy down there, and you have waterfall heavy or top heavy up there, which I've already collected it, that's why it's not showing up, but it's right behind that waterfall. You have special right there, you have special right there, you have special right there, as well as two more special boxes in the actual spawns themselves. And little things like this are going to help you tremendously when you actually get into a Crucible match and start playing. So aside from that, aside from knowing where all the ammo boxes and stuff like that are, knowing where all the flags are, Another thing that you need to learn is the routes to take. So, for example, if you spawn on A flag over here where I'm at, you will start the match more than likely right up here on top of this big-ass rock. And I can't get up there because I'm a hunter. There we go. So more than likely, if you spawn on A side, you'll start right here. And a lot of people will jump down and run straight into that little hallway right there. Or they will run right here and come straight around and go to where the Rift or B flag is if you're playing that. Or even in, if you're playing Clash, people will come over here and try to get that quick snipe, right? There's always somebody hard scoping over here. Maybe somebody's going to come up here, hide behind this pillar, and hard scope the objective. Either way, if you come into this area, you risk getting popped in the face before you even know what's going on. So knowing that if you drop down here where heavy is, you can come around this little side thing, be pretty well protected as you run this way, and you can actually just pop right up into their spawn and sneak up on them or flank them if you want to be technical and pop them in the back of the head just like that. Like it's it's little things like this that are going to help you win gun battles in Destiny, help you get an advantage, help you come out on top, like help you get first shot, you know? So many times first shot is going to determine whether or not you win or lose a gun battle. And I'm going to show you another example of what I'm talking about here and how easy it is to, you know, get taken advantage of, so to speak. So right here on Pantheon, um, this is a, a sniper alley that a lot of people will just hard scope the shit out of because this is a very high traffic area. Uh, control rift you know like people are trying to take a back way so that they don't get sniped over there and in doing so they get sniped right here so if you look down um, your sights here you can see that there's a line right there not a lot of people have figured this out thankfully but i'm going to make a video about it showing you how to do it so probably gonna probably gonna regret that at some point but if you see that line down there that line is going to be almost exactly where a guardian's head is going to be Alternatively, if you spawn on A side and you're looking down towards C side in this sniper alley, you too will have a line right there on the wall. You can see that up here is lighter, up here is darker, and there's a line that runs straight across the wall like that. That is where you know, or that is exactly where you need to put your sights if you're going to be hard scoping, because if they come around the corner and they're standing up, pop, you shoot them right in the face before they even realize what happens. Now, Pantheon is not the only map that has stuff like this available, you know, in sniper alleys. Actually, quite a few of them do. Uh, Frontier does. Um, First Light has a couple of them. Or, not First Light. Yeah, First Light. It is First Light. The big-ass map. But, uh, like, a lot of the sniper-heavy maps, they have, you know, little indicators on the walls at the ends of each of the sniper lanes. And I think Bungie did it intentionally because they knew, like, hey, this is where people are going to be sniping. 
and hardscoping and camping and all that stuff. So I think they're intentional, even if they're not, I mean, they're still there. So, you know, knowing these little intricacies of the maps is going to give you an advantage when you're playing. And I mean, even if you're not a sniper, even if you're not a sniper uh, and you run into that sniper alley, if somebody is down there hardscoping and they know that little trick that I just showed you with the lines on the wall, then you need to know how to counter it. So when you come around that corner, you know, jump instead of just running straight, you know, like make yourself harder to hit, be a harder target, you know, to hit, jump up and down, zigzag, do whatever you have to do. Like little things like that are what's going to keep you alive and give you the chance to kill your enemies. Another thing that is going to give you a good chance to survive and kill your enemies is knowing the current meta of the game. So right now, this is the current meta, the Matador 64. I'll go ahead and show you mine. Rangefinder, Rifled Barrel, Cascade, and Field Choke. It's pretty damn close to being a god roll Matador in terms of range and impact. Uh, I, I hate shotguns, man. I really do. I think that it's a lazy way to get kills, but it's in the game and you have to deal with it. Uh, I counter the Matador either with a sniper or an invective because the invective has the same amount of range, much lower impact, but I can get four shots off in the time that it'll take you to get off two with a matador, so chances are I'm going to beat you with a invective if you're using a matador. But, you know, knowing the meta, knowing what's popular, and knowing what you have, and how to make it to where you're playing to your strengths instead of theirs is going to help you out exponentially. So, for example, um, when I'm playing in Crucible, the only two primaries that I ever use is my Hawksaw here. I have one with full auto and max stability, and Hammer Forge, which gives me a nice little boost to range. I will either use my Hawksaw or I will use my Palindrome. These are the only two weapons that I use uh, primarily, but occasionally I will throw in the Cockatus SR4 if it's going to be a sniper-heavy map, then I'll toss this in if I'm going to be playing at range, this if I'm going to be playing close up, and this if I'm going to be playing in between. So knowing and having weapons to use in certain situations is going to help you out so much, guys. Uh, same goes for your specials. You want to complement this. If I'm using a close range weapon as my primary, I'm going to use a longer range weapon as my secondary. If I'm using a long range primary, like if I go into Crucible using this, then I'm going to have to use a shotgun because if I get in any close range fights with this, I'm going to lose 90% of the time because this thing fires so slow. This is meant to, you know, hang back and take your precision shots. So knowing what weapons you have, knowing how to play them, and knowing how to counter what other people are using is something that you need to learn. So what I would recommend is going to a private match uh, there's always people in LFG, there's always people on the Bungie.net forums that I see uh, looking for other people to just go into a private match in Crucible and just play around, just have fun. Like, I would recommend starting up, you know, your own forum on Bungie.net and say, hey, I'm trying to get better at Crucible. Uh, who wants to join up, go into a couple of different game modes and just have like a like a scrimmage or something, you know, like just play around where it doesn't matter where it's not going to affect your KD, where if you die too much, it's not going to piss you off because it's just for fun. You're just practicing, right? That's what I would recommend you guys doing before you actually go and you know try to start putting all these tips and tricks into action in the actual Crucible that I'm going to be going over, which uh, we'll start doing that in the next video. But, you know, just go into a private match, learn where everything is, uh, go into Rumble, kill yourself, in certain or in different areas of the map so that you can see where all the spawns are that's a really good way to learn the spawns because rumble puts you in random ass places um go into control learn where all the flags are go into rift learn where all that shit is and you know little things like this guys like they're gonna make all the difference in the world man they really and truly are even if you're a subpar player even if you have a bad aim if you're able to have your sights in an area like hard scoped where the enemy's head's going to be when they come around the corner and you get first shot on them, you're going to win. I mean, you're going to win. Uh, the last tip that I'm going to leave you guys with in this video is YouTube. Go to YouTube and watch some of these, you know, godly destiny crucible players like in and guys like that. And just watch their videos, watch how they play a map, watch the routes that they take on that map. Watch, you know, how they pre-aim when they go around a corner. Little tricks that they do are what you need to be doing. 
All right, so that's your homework between now and the next video that I post in this series. Watch some of the bigger YouTubers, and I would say go watch some of my videos, but while I do maintain in the Crucible, I, I'm probably not the best to show you how to do it because I play really weird. I have really bad vision, so a lot of times I aim, and let's say that that special box is their head. I'll, I'll do a lot of this. Like, it'll be... That's how I would shoot them in the face there if they were standing still. Like, I'm not going to... I don't have the the vision to be on target 24-7. Honestly, I get lucky a lot of times when I go on, like, these, you know, 10, 15 kill streaks. It's just the other team's bad. It's not that I'm good. But uh, anyway, guys, <laughs> that's going to bring Episode 2 to an end. Uh, like I said, I'll try to get Episode 3 up next week. And in Episode 3, we're going to start talking about playing actual Crucible and some stuff that you can do to help you out there. But anyway, that's going to bring this video to an end. If you enjoyed it, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I fucking love you. Thank you for watching. Take care, guys.